first injury report on the ute so far, which is a good thing. We've been on the road for eight months now. First injury report, it's good, but it was a pretty bit of a major one. Could have been a major one anyway. I'm jumping for my life. Oh my god. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Lapping Life. We've just rocked up to Kununurra after finishing the Gibb River Road. So we're pretty keen to be back in civilization for right a bit. Know, and it's a beautiful place too. We're just, well, we've just checked out the uh, the local boat ramp here running into Lake Kununurra and mate, this place is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely, but this episode, we're gonna head back to Broome along the Great Northern Highway, stopping in at all the places like Lake Argyll, the Bungles, Wolf Creek Crater, everything in between. It's gonna be good. Just after doing the Gibb River Road, we thought, well, we're thinking about getting jobs in Broome, so we're gonna go all the way back to Broome, doing it all the way. For people that don't, do, that aren't keen to do the Gibb River Road, we'll show you everything you can still do along the bitumen to Kununurra from Broome. Absolutely, but for this vlog, we've actually got a straggler tagging along. He's escaping the cold Victorian weather. Oh, yeah, it's bloody cold down now, don't you? So let's go pick him up. Righto, we've picked up our straggler. YouTube meet Charles. Charles meet YouTube. What's up guys? <laughs> <laughs> He's still a little bit camera shy but after the two weeks hopefully he will warm up a little bit more. But this morning we're at Ivanhoe's Crossing, we're going to chuck the drone up and cross that and then we're off to a secret destination called Secret Springs. But it's one that we won't share the location of, will we? We'll just... Keep it secret, look it up yes. on Wikicamps. Yeah, if you want to come you'll find it but we're going to keep it on the down low. Yes, it's supposed to be pretty gnarly full drive track getting there. Yeah, a few, a few creek, crossings. creek crossings. Pretty deep but we'll... There we go, bring you along with us. Pretty dry so far. We've had to do a few dry creek crossings, but we've come to this bad boy right here. Pretty rutted out on the entry, as you can see here. I don't know whether it shows. Gives it. I don't know whether it really shows you how deep those ruts are. And then this bad boy here. So it's pretty, pretty sandy. It's that like wet sand that if you play with it, it sort of brings the moisture up. So just got to give a Give it a bit of momentum, keep trucking through here. It does look pretty deep. The exit on the outside, on the other side over there, doesn't look too bad. See what happens though. But, um, gonna give it a crack. Hopefully we don't get bogged.
Well, we've made it. I'll tell you what, bloody hectic track in in the end. I think it was only 8Ks, but I reckon it took us about 40 minutes, 45 minutes to get in here. It's pretty slow going, very rocky. And from that first water crossing <laughs> that we showed you, there was probably oh, four or five more, and they did get pretty deep too. So I'd advise if you do find this place and you do attempt to come, definitely have a snorkel. Um, it is the end of the dry season, so it's probably the shallowest that, that these um, holes have been. So only probably going to get deeper too. So I'd advise definitely have a snorkel, um, fall drive, drop your tyres down and just creep through. It's all pretty hard on the ground, but they're just pretty deep. But there are a few people here, so it's it's not, not, so secret. not too secret, really. Shell's just yep. making a few rolls up. Yeah, got some lunch. What yeah, I was actually having? surprised um, how many people were in the car park. Like I thought it was secret, but it's obviously not very secret. <laughs> we're gonna whip up some salami and cheese, a very spinach rolls. Just a bit of everything, really. Yeah, sounds. a bit of whatever's in the fridge, really. Yes. But, um, yeah, so we're here. It's only a short walk into the swimming area. Mm -hmm. Apparently, yep. Yeah, and then there's a few, like, infinity pools up a bit higher. I'm not sure how you get to those yet, but I'm sure we'll have a bit of an explore and find those, hopefully. Yeah. But other than that, it's bloody cooking today, it's so, so hot, yeah. we're keen to get in for a swim. What do you reckon, Charles? Hell yeah. How you cool <laughs> yeah, how you going with the heat? Yeah, oh, yeah a, you could you could a, definitely tell he's from down south. Have a look how wide he is. <laughs> look at that. Yes, he has. They call me Casper. <laughs> Jumping for my life. Oh my god. So scary. Definitely. It feels so high from up here. It doesn't look that high from down there. But maybe I might stop hands just in case I let go because this isn't the floating one. That was definitely worth the awesome four-wheel drive track in. Shales is a little bit stressed on the way out. We lifted a few tyres, but 100% the coolest place around Kununurra for sure. Secret Springs, mate. If you can get there, 100% do it. They had a good pull down the bottom, and if you climb the rope up above that pool, there's a heap of good little pools and some, some really good, uh, really deep pools that you can jump off, you can flip off, you can do all the cool stuff. And then above that, is an awesome as infinity pool overlooking 
the mountain ranges. We checked into Lake Argyle yesterday, had a bit of a time to relax. Mm -hmm. We sat up by the pool, the famous infinity pool, watched the sunset, watched um, the Muso, the local Muso around here, which he's yeah, been here for music. 10, been here for 10 seasons now and he was a ripper, wasn't he? Yeah, he was so funny. Yeah, what was That's his name? Steve Case. Steve Case, he's an absolute ripper, has some ripper songs. We only listened to his uh, originals last night. Mm -hmm. He's up by the beer garden tonight, so they're gonna play some pub classics tonight and a few more originals, but mate, he had some funny songs, did he? Yeah, it was so much fun. Yeah, you have to look him up on YouTube or whatever, or come down here and listen to him. Yeah. Hopefully he's here next year. Um, but yeah, we're just going for a walk down to the lake now, because mm -hmm. the pool is packed. Yeah, as, it's cooking, it's so hot. It is, it is hot, it's about 38 degrees today. Yeah. But we thought we'd just show you this little walking trail. You just drop in down past the, the pool at the caravan park here, which takes you to a sign like this. Yeah, so we're going Jess's Trail, we're going down this way, down to the lake. But you can go to the old homestead, the old Lake Argyle homestead down to the left, or the bluff, which is over there. It takes you for a 5k, 5k round trip over the other side, which you can obviously look back this way over to the caravan park, or you can continue and look, look over that way, which I'm guessing would be absolutely stunning. Yeah. But, mate, the sunset last night was absolutely amazing wasn't it beautiful it just like lit up the mountains and oh yeah it just looked just, fake it, yeah it was awesome yeah. the the lake glassed off and it was just so good but now we're going to make our way down to this pontoon which is down in the water down here you probably won't be able to see it on the gopro so i won't show you but we will do this hike try not to slip down these steps here because it is pretty rocky <laughs> and a bit slippery but um, we'll make our way down and we'll show you what it's like down there. On this pontoon here, about a, I don't know, probably 80 metre swim from over there. So the trail, actually, I don't know whether you can see it, it sort of goes up around this way up there, around, and you jump up there. There's a flat bottom or a flat top little pontoon there where everybody's sitting. We've come out here today for a diving competition. <laughs> <laughs> and, and some failed flips. And some failed flips. But Charles, she hasn't come out here because before we swam, before we jumped in, there was a little croc over next to that pontoon there. And she's like, nope, not happening. So me and Charles have to make some fun. So let us know who you reckon wins, but No I got, splash. I got tickets on you as well. <laughs> look, didn't look too bad, but wasn't too glamorous. Wouldn't I say it? Charles was happy with it. He was happy with it once he jumped out. Ten out of ten, I reckon. <laughs> All right, put, I'll put show you how it's really done. Team. 
Yeah, legs went over your head, mate. Ah, bugger. Too much follow-up. This is what peer pressure can do. Yeah, it's shocking, kids. <laughs> Don't listen to it. Be your own person. Come, Mr. Inspirational. <laughs> Ooh, tingly. No good. <laughs> Surprise! We got a barbecue bird on Lake Argyle. Oh, check those views. Skipper for the day. Yo! How you feeling? He's got to stay oh, sober. Nervous. 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 <laughs> First time driving a boat. boat. <laughs> nah, it's gonna be kidding. good. Yeah, absolutely. How you feeling? Yeah, excited. Absolutely. Here to get, here to get cold. <laughs> so there's a few things you can do. We're just gonna try and make me fall over. Um, you can explore the lake, you can't go too far because obviously it's a massive lake, it's 21, 21 times the size of the Sydney Harbour area, whatever it's called. But one of the fun things you can do while exploring a boat is going to jump rock, so I'm sure these two boys will be showing you a lot about that. You. <laughs> After a few beers they might be a little bit too cocky, but... So we've got the boat for four hours, cost 275 bucks, but we hired an esky and some ice, so it costs about 300 bucks all up. But Happy days! We got the lake to ourselves. I don't think life can get any better. Nuts nah. took the glass off today. Tell you what, if you're around Lake Argyle, 100% barbecue boat, mate. It's got so it. good. Total glass off today. And we've literally feels like we've got the lake to ourselves. How good is this? Managed to climb up onto the roof, probably not advised, but have a look at the views here. <laughs> Gotta do it now. Couldn't help myself. I'm jumping! <laughs> Living the dream! Wasn't yesterday just a great experience? Out on that barbecue boat, just soaking it all in. We didn't vlog after it, because we were all in a bit of fine form, so we thought we'd give it the, uh, give it the, give it the day off to uh, recover, but we were 
Punalulu bungles bound this morning but I went to grease the suspension, grease the leaf springs and all that sort of stuff underneath the car because the the um, because the track into the bungles is supposed to be pretty hectic but we haven't got very far as you can see exactly the same spot as we were this morning I went to grease the suspension down here I'll give you a look and this bolt here had shorn shoon off sheared off so that wasn't there and there was no bowl there so that part there that front of that the front of this leaf spring here pretty much holds this back wheel in line so if that whole bolt had to come right out along driving this would have all dropped down and we would have been steering from the back and the front and that is not a good thing so we went up to the office up here at up at the caravan park and they got onto their mechanic and we've just got a bit of a a fix a temporary a temporary fix on the back there just put a bolt that fitted but we're gonna have to go into town tomorrow now and get a proper bolt and we've been trying to get onto every tom dick and harry mechanic in kananara but they're all sort of booked out so we watched the mechanic uh fix her up this morning so as long as we get that bolt, as long as we get a proper bolt, strong enough bolt to be able to chuck in the back of that, we reckon we can do it ourselves, which is a bonus. But if they can fit us in tomorrow too, once we run in there, they might say, yeah, all good. Well, this is what we're hoping anyway. Yeah, all good, we'll fit you in. Because it's not a long job. The bloke this morning had a little bit of a stuff around, but he didn't have a, um, he didn't have a hoist or anything like that. So hopefully we can get in there tomorrow Get that bolt in and get bungles bound again. But thought we'd give you a little check in with the first injury report on the ute so far, which is a good thing. We've been on the road for eight months now. First injury report, that's good. But it was a pretty bit of a major one. It could have been a major one anyway. But anyway, we'll set back up again and probably go for a swim, I reckon. So it's not a too bad of a spot to bloody break down, I'll tell you that much. So we're back in Kanamara trying to fix problem number one with the car. Problem number two now is our dual battery system has gone flat and we have no idea why. Nothing's changed, yeah. it just stopped charging. So here we are with Mr. Electrician in the Kununara car park, <laughs> working his magic. We'll get us all sorted again, hopefully, before the fridge See, food goes nice, gross. Nice. Yeah. Homemade. I'll throw it over to you. Yeah. Oh, so we've just made some homemade jumper leads because. We didn't have any, but what do you think, Charles? We probably should get some. I reckon it could be uh, something to have in stock. <laughs> <laughs> We're on to problem number two now with our bolt, so. Yes, go to the four-wheel drive shop, go to the bloody bolt shop in town, and I think we'll have to do this by ourselves today. That's another thing we'll probably have to do here in the shade again. But yes, we luckily found it yesterday. Luckily we got a proper bolt in because yeah, unlucky for us that that is a very important bolt for the car. Um, some people say it's like going 100 k's down the road at 100 k's an hour and just pretty much pulling the steering wheel off and chucking it out the front window. So it could have been, could have been, could have been very bad, but luckily we picked up on it and luckily we got a quick fix and now we'll go and get a proper bolt and uh, we'll be right to rock and roll. After a bit of a stuff around day today, we got sorted. We ended up having to go back to Lake Argyle and go and annoy the mechanic there once more time, but he was such a legend. He helped us out and sent us on our way. Thank gosh, otherwise we would have been stuck in Kananara for who knows how long, but we've made our way halfway to the bungles, which we're super excited for, but we found an awesome free camp on the way. Not sure what it's called, but I'll pop it on the screen, just off wiki, and it's just before the turn off into the bungles. So we've got about a two hour drive tomorrow from the turn off into the bungles. It's meant to be pretty corrugated, so we'll take it easy, we'll show you what the conditions are like and all that sort of stuff but have a look at this right these boys they're so lucky this free camp has full 4g because they're pretty avid afl supporters so they both barrack for geelong but by the time this vlog airs the granny would have already been done and dusted but for now their hopes and dreams are still <laughs> very very much alive but we'll give you a quick look at our little setup here so Got some snags in the barbecue the fly down <laughs> Here's the boys. <laughs> Up the catters. <laughs> Got the footy going. Doesn't get much better than that, eh? And a few coldies while watching the Geelong, while watching Geelong smash Brisbane. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we'll let the boys.
bask in their glory as Geelong are thrashing Brisbane at the moment. And we'll see you in the morning. Well, it's an early morning this morning and we've just got in to the Bungle Bungles turn off. Peaceful, you can literally hear everything. 